friends, and welcome to Preschool Storytime with Miss Natalie. I am so excited because we are talking about our favorite foods today, and I have some awesome food books to share with you, and we're going to turn into a slice of pizza during yoga. I hope you like pizza. I sure do. Are you ready for our first story? All right, let's get started with a fun book. We are going to read a book about a little cat called Yoko and what her favorite food is. Yoko's mother was making her lunch. She put rice on a bamboo mat and rolled up some sushi and packed it all up. Have a wonderful day at school, my little cherry blossom. I will, answered Yoko. She said hi to her friends and Miss Jenkins rang the lunch bell. Lunch box is out, please, she said. All of her friends had different kinds of sandwiches and the Franks had Franks and beans. Yoko had her favorite sushi. There was crispy cucumber, pink shrimp, green as seaweed, and the tastiest tuna. What's that, said one of the Franks? Is that seaweed? Oh no, said the other Frank. Is that raw fish? Yuck, watch out. Ew. Everybody else, said Valerie. It's time to play. But Yoko did not want to play. What's wrong, Yoko, asked Miss Jenkins. Everybody laughed at my lunch, said Yoko. Don't forget it by snack time, said Miss Jenkins, but they didn't. Yoko opened a thermos of red bean ice cream, and the Frank said, red bean ice cream is for weirdos. Poor Yoko. Miss Jenkins knew she had to do something. She thought and thought, and finally sent home a letter. Dear parents, Monday will be International Food Day at Hilltop School. Everyone is asked to bring in a dish from a foreign country and must try a bite of everything. We'll make a whole deluxe sushi for the class, said Yoko's mother. Everyone will try our sushi and everyone will love it. Do you think they're going to try our sushi? We'll find out. On Monday, Valerie bought enchiladas, Timothy brought Caribbean coconut crisps, and everyone else brought dishes from different countries, and Big Frank cooked up a big pot of Boston Franks and beans. After at noon, Miss Jenkins rang the lunch bell and everyone said, International Food Day means try everything. When it was time to play, all the food was gone, but no one had touched Yoko's sushi. She looked so sad. Poor Yoko. She sat under the learning tree until she heard the clickety clock of chopsticks. It was Timothy. He was still hungry. Let me show you how to use them, said Yoko. Timothy polished off the rest of the crab cones his own way. Can we have sushi again tomorrow, he said. I'll ask my mother, said Yoko. The next day, uh, during the school bus song, Timothy found a coconut crisp to give to Yoko, and they made plans for their push their desks together and open a restaurant. And they did. They had tomato sandwiches, dragon rolls, and brownies and green tea ice cream for dessert, and they couldn't have asked for anything more. Oh, they look so happy. You know, friends, if you see a food that you think looks kind of yucky, you should still try it because if you don't try food, you'll never know if you like it. So the next time you see a food, I want you to give it a try. Are you ready to sing a song, friends, all about how do you make cookies? because I sure love cookies, and I bet you do too. Ready, let's count to three. One, two, three. I am making cookie dough, round and round the beaters go. Pour some flour from a cup, stir and stir and stir it up. Roll them cup and nice and neat, place them on a cookie sheet. Bake them, count them, one, two, three and serve them to your friends with tea. I am making cookie dough, round and round the beaters go. My favorite kind of cookies, I like sugar cookies and chocolate chip cookies. What kind of cookies do you like to eat? Friends, we are gonna read all about a boat town where food falls in the sky and cloudy with a chance of meatballs. One night, Grandpa told us the best tall time bedtale story he told. 
Across an ocean over lots of mountains, three deserts, and one smaller ocean lay the tiny town of Chew and Swallow. It was very much like a normal town. There were people, cats, dogs, and a downtown Main Street, but there were no grocery stores. All the food they ate fell from the sky. It never rained rain or snow. It would rain soup and juice, snow mashed potatoes and green peas, and have storms of hamburgers. They would check the weather report every day to see what they'd have to eat, and they would walk around with forks, spoons, knives, plates, bowls, napkins, cups, and to-go containers so they'd be ready for any weather and could take home leftovers. Some mornings they'd have fried eggs and toast for breakfast followed by some rain of milk. Sometimes for lunch they'd have frankfurters followed by mustard clouds and a drizzle of soda. And for dinner they'd have pot roast, mashed potatoes, and a sunset of jello. Their sanitation department was in charge of picking up all the food. Some they give the cats and dogs, some they put in the ocean for the animals, and some they put back in the ground to help grow flowers. Everything was delicious until the weather took a turn for the worst. One day, only gorgonzola cheese. Another day, overcooked broccoli. And the next day, there were only Brussels sprouts and peanut butter with mayo. And the next day, a green soup fog so thick you could barely see. Lunch one day brought 15 inch strips of cream cheese and jelly sandwiches, and everyone had a stomach ache. And one day there was an awful salt and pepper wind with an even worse tomato tornado. People were sneezing as they ran to hide from the tomatoes. The sanitation department had to give up. There was too much to do. People's houses were ruined by meatballs and pizza. There were stores boarded up and no more school because a giant pancake fell on it. And so they decided to leave the town of Chew and Swallow. It was a matter of survival. They gathered pieces of stale bread with peanut butter, took their necessities, and sailed off in their rafts for a new land. You see the storm of hot dogs following them? Scary. After a week, they reached a small town which welcomed them. They used their bread to build temporary houses. They sent her into school and jobs and had to get used to buying food from the supermarket. They thought it was strange that food was kept in containers instead of falling from the sky. And nobody ever dared to go back to Chew and Swallow to find out what had happened. They were too afraid. Henry and I were awake until the very end of Grandpa's story. I even remember his goodnight kiss. And the next morning we woke up to see snow falling outside our window. We ran to eat breakfast quicker than usual to go sledding with Grandpa. And it's funny, even as we were sledding down the hill, we thought we saw a giant pat of butter at the top and we could almost smell mashed potatoes. And that is the end. Would you want to live in town in a town where food falls from the sky? I don't know if I think it would taste very good. What if it took too long and it got stale? And now friends, it is time for us to turn into yummy slices of pizza. I'm going to be a pesto potato pizza slice, but what about you? All right, so if you are not standing friends, let's stand on up. You're going to stamp, stamp your feet into the ground. Take one foot and step it out a little bit wider. Then you take the foot that you stepped out wide and you're going to turn, turn, turn those toes until they're pointing away from your body. Then you're going to put your arms out into a T. You look over a shoulder, you lean forwards and down. And this is called triangle pose, which is also the shape of a pizza slice. So we are all a yummy slice of the pizza. Maybe your hand comes to the ground, or maybe it's right here, or maybe it just kind of slides and slides like mine. And then if you use your belly, and you come up and turn those toes in. And now we're going to do the other side. So bring those arms back out wide and turn your other toes until they are away from your body. And you're going to lean and come down. And you can look straight ahead. You can look at the ground or you can look up at your hand all the way in the sky. 
I bet you all look like yummy, yummy pizza slices. Mm mm mm. And on the count of three, one, two, three. Use your strength. Come back up. Turn those toes in. Give a little hop and sit down for our last story. You guys did a great job. Congratulations on turning into the yummiest pizza slices. I have a question for you. Did you know that dragons love tacos? I know, right? But we're gonna read why they like tacos in this book called Dragons Love Tacos. Look at how many tacos that dragon has in his mouth. Absolutely crazy. Those gosh darn dragons, they love their tacos so much. Hey kid, did you know that dragons love tacos? They love beef tacos, chicken tacos, they love really big gigantic tacos and tiny little baby tacos as well. Why do dragons love tacos? Maybe it's the smell from the sizzling pan, the crunch of the crispy tortillas, or maybe shh, it's a secret. Either way, if you want to make friends with dragons, tacos are key. Hey dragon, why do you guys love tacos so much? But wait, as much as dragons love tacos, they hate spicy salsa even more. They hate spicy green salsa and spicy red salsa. They hate spicy chunky salsa and spicy smooth salsa too. If salsa is spicy at all, dragons can't stand it. Why do dragons hate spicy salsa? Well, just one drop of hot sauce makes a dragon's ears smoke. Just one single speck of hot pepper makes a dragon snort sparks. Spicy salsa gives dragons the tummy trembles, and when dragons hit the tummy trembles, oh boy. If you want to make tacos for dragons, keep the toppings mild. Tomatoes, lettuce, cheese, these are all good toppings for tacos for dragons. Hey dragon, how do you feel about spicy taco toppings? Oh no! Dragons also love parties. They love costume parties, pool parties, big parties with accordions, and tiny parties with charades. Why do dragons love parties? Maybe the conversation, the dancing, maybe the sound of a friend's laughter. And the only thing dragons love more than tacos and parties is taco parties. Parties with lots of tacos with them. If you want to have some dragons over for a taco party, you'll need buckets of tacos. Pile loads of tacos. The best way to judge is to get a boat and fill the boat with tacos. That's how many tacos dragons need for a taco party. Because dragons love tacos. Hey dragon, are you excited for the big taco party? He wrote it in his calendar. Just remember that dragons hate spicy salsa. Before you host your dragon taco party, get rid of all the, saucy, all the spicy salsa. In fact, bury that salsa in the backyard so no dragons can find it. His house is full of tacos. I want a house full of tacos. These dragons love your taco party. They love the music, the decorations, and especially the tacos. Congratulations! It's a good thing you got rid of all that spicy. Wait a second. What are those little green things in the salsa? You didn't read the fine print. Totally mild salsa. Now with, uh-oh, spicy jalapeno peppers. <gasps> Dragons, listen to me. Do not eat those tacos. See those green specks? Those are jalapeno peppers. They are super spicy. I know you love tacos, dragons, but you are not gonna love those tacos. Do not let those dragons eat those tacos. Crunch, crunch, crunch. I think it's too late. <gasps> too late. So much fire. So many fiery tacos. Uh-oh. But why, why would dragons help you rebuild your house? Maybe they're good Samaritans. Maybe they feel bad for wrecking it. Maybe they're just in it for the taco breaks. After all, dragons love tacos. Oh, I think having a dragon taco party would be a lot of fun, but you have to make sure to have no spicy salsa or a dragon might burn your house down. Thank you for joining me for another preschool story time, friends. 
I hope you get to eat your favorite food this weekend and have a lot of fun. Maybe you can ask your grown up if you can help make something with them. I always loved cooking with my mommy when I was little. Have a great rest of your day and I will see you next Friday. Let's say goodbye together in Italian because they make really good pasta and pizza there. On the count of three, we're gonna say ciao. Can you say ciao? Good job. Ready? One, two, three, ciao!